Okay, guys, we are recording for anybody that couldn't jump on. So today I'm going to focus mainly on entry. So there's been enough zooms for us to go through kind of the, the three-point analysis to this strategy. Um, those of you that haven't, I've got the recordings to do so. Um, and also, of course, I will be going through it at later dates as well. So don't worry about that. But today I really want to go through entry because I know a lot of people have reached out to me privately and said that the one thing that they're still a bit confused on is when to enter. They get the support and resistance, they get the divergence, but they're still a bit unsure on where to enter. So that's what we're going to focus on today. So I'll do spend five minutes doing a quick recap. I'm going to go over entry and then I'm going to bring on our guest speaker. Um, so just bear with me. Okay, if you haven't already got your charts um, loaded and saved, remember to reach out to me. I have a seven minute video that shows you to load your charts just like I am doing now. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, this oh, perfect. I think there's still somebody with no audio. Just want to make sure that everybody gets access. Okay, cool. don't know how to load chart okay amazing so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to recirculate the recording it's a seven minute video that shows you how to do that can i request that anybody that needs that video just um just literally message me on i'll i'll, I'll keep check okay aiden yes aiden i'm in your group that's fine anybody else um please just direct message me and i can give you that set up um yeah just just all my numbers are in all groups reading through some of the so okay yep guys just message me privately after this call and i'll get you to set up to load your charts and um, there's a few new people that are saying should i be on this call absolutely um because this will kind of give you an overall insight into what we're doing so i'm not going to go over basic harmonics how to use the scanner but what i am going to do is quickly recap the three point analysis so remember you are learning the multiplier now i do recommend that you finish the harmonic plan and that you watch the multi-fire videos by Manny. Not because I had to go through them and I want you to suffer as well. Um, in fact, me and Chris have probably watched them about four times now. But guys, honestly, as much as they're long, they're of so much value. So please do watch them at least once before kind of um, jumping on this strategy. So it's really important. But the reason why I do these trainings is to make it so much easier and, and more engaging for you to do this. How do you zoom in and out? Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, perfect. No worries. Okay, so a little trick. What you can do is click on the section. So you see this bit here, guys, zoom in and out. You see this bit here. If I want to just focus on the pattern, if you double click in the right in the white area, it will just um, open up that bit. You can do that with any of the scanners. Just click, double click in the white area. Okay. Do that with all of them. Double click to get back out again. Alternatively, if you want to zoom in on a candle, you click the zoom in button. And if I want to zoom in on the D point, there you go. We've done that. Um, or alternatively, if you go to the bottom and you hover, you'll notice that a toolbar comes up and you can simply zoom out and zoom in by clicking on it. Yep. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's do the three-point analysis quickly just to recap what we did last lesson. Always love recapping. Remember, everything, everybody that's taking notes, you are learning the multi-fire strategy. So put that down as your title. My note takers are my money makers. Confirmation number one is a support and resistance zone. Everything we're going to discuss today is aimed around the D point. Okay, is aimed around the D point. I'm going to circle the D point on this particular pattern so that you can all, oh, that was a bad circle, so that you can all see that lovely D point. Okay, there we go. Lovely jubbly. This is going to be our focus for today. I am recording, I am recording. Thank you so much. Okay, so confirmation number one is a support and resistance zone 
If you haven't watched this, this is in the 100 to 200 series. A support and resistance zone is where price goes back to a specific area more than once. For me, if it's touched twice, it's not a strong enough area. You need at least three to four points to confirm this. So how do we do it? We get our rectangle tool. We go from D. There we go. Let me zoom out. We go from D. And we draw a box all the way backwards. Somebody on a previous call asked me how thick does the box have to be. Guys, because you're not entering off the box like price trap, it doesn't have to be wick to body. Okay? Yes, in when you listen to Manny and yes, when he's teaching the strategy, yes, he's teaching you how to draw support and resistance accurately. But for the process of this, you're not entering off the box. So you don't need it to be any kind of accuracy as long as you've got your box is absolutely fine i would recommend that you don't go past like the b point um so it's like this sort of fatness okay so keep it nice up here there we go let me zoom in on the b point so you can see exactly what i mean this is your b point try not to make your box go below your b point okay amazing apologies okay so now, looking at our support and resistance zone, remember this is a quick recap, so I can go through this with anyone that don't understand. Okay, if we look at this support and resistance zone, other than our D point, we have it touching at X, we have it reacting here, let me draw this. We have a reaction at RX, okay? We have a reaction here. We have a reaction here. We have a reaction here. Let's see if I go further back, if we have any more reactions. We do. Okay, guys, if I drag this back further, we have a strong point here as well. Okay, if we take it back further, all of this action here. So we have quite a strong support and resistance um, on, on this D point. Here, here, we've got more than two touches. Perfect. That's confirmation number one done, ladies and gentlemen. Confirmation number two, divergence. Now, remember... Divergence is when price is moving in a different direction to your momentum indicators. I'll repeat that. Pri divergence is when price is moving in a different direction to your momentum indicators. These two in the middle, your AO and MACD, are your momentum indicators. Don't worry about stock. These two here are your momentum indicators. How do you draw divergence? So you remember, we're always going from the D point. So we draw from D to X. Okay, D to X. So I'm going to determine whether this action within our candles from peak to peak is different from peak to peak or peak to low on our momentum calculator. Okay, and momentum indicators. So we're going to draw exactly the same line on each graph. So we go from X and then we go to D. Okay. And do X again. Then we're going to go to D. Okay. Perfect. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that there is no divergence in this market. Okay. Because for the divergence to happen, you need it to be moving in different directions. Remember, divergence is when your price action is different to your momentum. So for this to happen, your D point would need to be something like this. Oops, wrong thing. Two seconds. So if my D was down here, for instance, okay, and this was my line, my green line, and we can see that this X to D is clearly pointing down, and my on my momentum, they're clearly pointing up. That's when you get divergence, okay? So because the gradient of this, so when I put it back to its original point, because the gradient of this was pointing up, gradient is the direction of the line, this is flat, but this is pointing up. We do not have divergence. We would not carry on looking at this trade. For divergence to happen, 
the gradient of your price would need to be at a different direction. So this is pointing down. These are pointing up. That is when you would get divergent. Okay, that is confirmation number two. Confirmation number one is support and resistance. Confirmation number two is divergent. And last but not least, confirmation number three is entry. Entry is what we're going to be focusing on today. If you are unsure and still need help with support and resistance and divergence, let me know. I have many recordings and many other live sessions will be focusing on that. Okay. But for today's, we are going to be focusing on entry to ensure that people are using this scanner and getting in on the trades. Okay. Amazing, amazing stuff. So let me clear my chart and let's focus on entry. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So guys, I'm going to do all of these entries based on that the fact we've already marked up support and resistance, we've already determined that it's got divergence, okay? So even those that are a bit more advanced on this and can see that there may not actually be divergence, don't worry, we're just doing it for the process of this training, okay? So let's look at entry. Now remember, I said that we are always, let me just put everybody at the bottom of the screen. We are always focusing on the D points, okay? I've circled it again for you guys. If it is a divergence equals trade. Yes, so if you've got divergence, then that's good. If there's no divergence, you do not want to look at this trade. You're looking for divergence in the market. When you get divergence, that is indicating that a change in direction is coming. That's why we use it. Okay, so, we, so those of you that are unaware, the harmonic scanner is an algorithm scanner that pinpoints reversals. So everything that you're going to be doing for the multi-fire strategy is to determine whether that reversal is actually coming or not. Okay. So support and resistance. We know that price reacts off of it. Okay. It should bounce or it's going to break through. That's why we look at support and resistance. Secondly, divergence. If you've got divergence in a market, it means that the market is, should um, reverse. And last but not least, our entry is going to help determine whether that reversal is coming. So at the point of D is when your pattern completes. At the point of D is when you should be looking at entry, because that's when they say in that the reversal should start taking place. So for me, my entry is a two part entry. Well, sometimes three. OK, first thing we look at is stochastic. Now, these exact stochastic levels was given to us as well as the MACDs and everything else by Christopher Terry himself, okay? So Manny Q's mentor was Christopher Terry himself and you'll witness that when you do the recorded videos. So all of these um, settings are based on Christopher Terry. Now, the stochastic, I'm going to focus on it for the moment. So let me zoom in. The stochastic, okay, determines whether a market is overbought or oversold. OK, so we know from basic market analysis that you will be buying low. OK, you're going to buy low. And you're going to sell high. OK, are we all in agreement with that? OK, we're going to buy low and we're going to sell high. Yeah. So you want to buy it at its possible lowest point and you want to try and sell it at its possible highest point to maximize on that, okay? To maximize on that. I'll, go, I'll show that in a minute, D point. So anything that's in your pink box is determined as normal market movement, okay? Normal fluctuations, ups and downs. When it comes out of your pink box, this is when it's saying that it is overbought. When it comes out of your pink box down here, it's saying it's oversold. So that is telling me, okay, that this market has been coming down for a while, okay? And once it gets into overbought territory like it has, it should be shooting back up, okay? 
when the market has been going up for a while and you've got a lot of buying power, it's going to come to a point where it's going to start shooting back down. This is why you've got overbought and oversold territory because it's telling you that there's going to be a change in power. So by using the stochastic, we can help pinpoint whether our reversal is coming. So in comparison now to our D point, remember we're looking for entry at D, okay? If we marry the stochastic up, you, if your market is in the pink area, that's not a good sign. When you look at the D point, if your market is overbought or oversold, that's telling you that your reversal is gonna come. So if I'm looking at the D point and my market is in the pink area, that's telling me that the reversal may not be ready. That's how you use stochastic to help you with the multiplier. You're looking for the market to be at an extreme level to say that a reversal is coming. If it's in the pink area at the D point, so look, we go down. If it's in your pink area, it's saying that either the shift has already started happening or it's saying that your reversal may not be coming. Okay? Your shift in momentum may not be coming. So answer that question just in case anybody else that, um, is a bit unsure. If you're or looking at your D point, if your TPs are above, you're looking for a buy. If your TPs are below your D point, you're looking for a sell. Okay, so always look where TPs are. If your TPs are above your D, you're looking for a buyer. If your TPs are below, you're looking for a sell. So that's how I use stochastic in my entry. Number two, which is the most important, is candles. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm just going to chuck, chuck off the chat box for a minute so I can really kind of go into this. Because this is important, and we touched a little bit on it last week when Leah asked a question. So, if I'm looking at let me get my box, and those of you that would have been on last night's session possibly would understand what I'm about to go through. Okay, so I'm not going to drag it all the way back. So you can see that we've got re reaction here, here, reaction reaction with the wicks, reaction, reaction, reaction. And obviously it's hoping that we react off the D point. Okay. There's more that when we go back probably. Now, okay. If I was to actually draw this accurately. Okay. So this is me being precise with my support and resistance right so everybody can see my support and resistance on yeah okay i've actually drawn it appropriately okay now if we're entering off of our d point okay remember the banks manipulate the market so when you're looking at support and resistance okay retail traders teach you i say so re retail um retail market analysis will teach you that the market reacts off of the support and resistance okay we can see it's done it here it's come back down it's done it here okay and we're saying every time it touches it should be doing this bouncing off of it yeah okay that's what retail traders teach you that every time it comes it should react off of it or it possibly could break through it and react like this okay react off of the line like this now the banks can see this because if you're a retail trader, what are you going to do when you've got a support and resistance zone? You are going to think, right, if my market has bounced here, come back, bounced, come back, bounced, come back, bounced, come back, it's coming to my D point, retail traders are going to think, I'm going to put an order in right here, so when it bounces, I've not got to do no work and it enters me in the market and I'm good to go. That's what retail traders do. Guys, we teach you not to be retail traders. That's what Manny stresses about as well. This is why candle analysis is important because the banks can see everybody placing their orders 
every time the market starts coming back down to your support and resistance zone. If I can see this zone, how many we got on this call? 72 people on this call can see this zone. Thousands of people around the world can see it, meaning the banks can see it. So can you also notice that if we zoom in, ladies and gentlemen, where my support and resistance zone is, we have areas of wicks here, 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 okay? We have areas of wicks here. This is the banks manipulating the market because where you've got, where you've got your, um, your support and resistance zone and everybody's setting up buyers along it, you are giving the banks their money. Liquidity is below all of this area, okay? All underneath, all of this is liquidity in the instance of your stop losses, okay? So the banks know that retail traders along this support and resistance area is going to place their buyers. Below your buyer, what are you gonna have? A stop loss. That's why the banks wick it down. Because you all have your stop losses there. It wicks it down. A stop loss for us is money for the banks. This is why they do it, okay? And then they let it go in the, in the, in the way. Look, it comes all the way down, it wicks you out, it goes back up again. Done the same here, come all the way down, breaks you out, comes back up again, okay? This is why candle closure is very important because Manny says, rather than getting caught in manipulation of the bank, he waits for the momentum to change. Retail traders look to get in, pew, pew, try to get in here. No, wait for momentum to change. You're working with momentum with, um, with multi-fire. So rather than thinking, right, I'm going to enter here, I'm going to enter on my D point, you must wait for candle closure. I can't stress this enough. So let's go through it. If I'm looking for a buy, ladies and gentlemen, this is a new trade, so let me look at an old one. If I'm looking for a buy, lovely jubbly, lovely jubbly. This is my support and resistance line going back. Remember, we're looking at our D point. If I'm looking for a buyer, which I am, I'm going to be waiting for a blue candle to close so that the banks don't wick me out. I get in too early, hit stop loss, lose my confidence, forget trading for the rest of the day. Okay, because we've all been there. We get in the trade. I know it's going up. I know it's going up. The banks see this, pushes it down, hits your stop loss. We all sulk. Throw our toys out the pram. Think that we're going to quit. Say I am a scam. Maybe withdraw our money and then come back two weeks later. We've been there, guys. We've all been there. Yeah, we've all been there. No, we wait for candle closure. I must be stressed. I cannot stress highly enough on candle closure. Do not be a greedy trader. Greediness will get you caught out. What would you rather do? Try and get, pew, pew, and then the bank mugs you off, right? Bank chins you straight square in the jaw. Or you wait for the movement to start, you get your candle closure, you lose possibly five pips out of the movement, and you know that you're good to go. What would you prefer? Put in the chat box. Would you rather try and get this most powerful, powerful entry on the dot and possibly get chinned by the bank or would you let five pips go on the table to secure that you are in the right trade put in the group be honest put in the chat box greedy or not greedy what's the what's the options guys greedy or not greedy let five pips go or try and get perfect entry not greedy guys i promise you if you wait for candle closure don't be greedy i would rather if it's a 30 pip trade I'd rather lose eight of them pips, take 22, than get in and risk the banks manipulating me. Because once momentum has changed, once you've got that and everything marries up, you're good to go, okay? 
Chris is going to come on in a minute and he's going to show you how to use fibs and other patterns to determine entry as well. There's a question in the chat box. How many candles would you wait for? I wait for a momentum candle. Now, people say to me, what is a momentum candle? And I simply break it down as a nice, juicy candle. So if you're looking for buyers, you're looking for blue candles. If you're looking for sales, you're looking for red candles. By a juicy momentum candle, your body needs to be greater than your wicks. So let's zoom in on the candles so I can show you an example. This big blue candle here is not a momentum candle because that wick is hefty. Okay, that's not good. Nor is this red candle not good. This candle here, this red candle, you'd class it as a momentum. The wicks are a lot shorter than the body. This blue candle, the wicks are a lot shorter than the body. Okay? Here, I still wouldn't have, probably wouldn't have entered. Okay? If my other entries would have married up, like some other things, like my stochastic, and I'm going to quickly go through Bollinger Bands, then maybe so. But just looking at candles alone, I probably would have entered on this candle here. Okay? The cl closing of this candle. Yes, we may have got this, okay? And you could have technically got in this candle because of um, body being hot, greater than the wrist. But these two, is showing me that the momentum hasn't quite changed. Another little trick as well to marry up with your candles. Look at your MACD. I'm looking for buying power, right? So if I put a horizontal line across my MACD so you can see the zero level, just to make it easier on everybody's eyes, okay? So I've just added that black line in. So now the black line is your zero level on the MACD. You'll notice, okay, all of this movement down here is selling power. It's all below the zero line. You'd be waiting for it to go above for buying power, okay, to say that momentum shifts. So if we're following the MACD, this blue candle still hasn't crossed above. This candle, barely. This candle, barely. So that candle that I said here is where you see it actually fully above the zero line. And then all along here, you've got good buying power. So you can also use the MACD as an indicator to say whether it's a momentum candle. Okay? You can also see on our lines, on our EMAs and our MAs, that it's actually crossed over. Can you see that you've got the crossover? So the blue is below. You've got selling power. It now crosses. You've got buying power. Yeah? These are all little tricks that you can use to, to, to um, know that that momentum candle is there. Good question. Good, 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 good question. I'll come on to that. I'll come on to that. Tip. So remind me if I don't finish it before I hand over to Chris um, to do that. So last but not least, this is another little thing if I'm still... Um, want to double check, but you shouldn't be. After you've got all of that married up, I would have literally entered on this candle. Okay. Last but not least, I just want to show you another little trick that you can use. And this is just my personal thing. I don't think this is actually taught. This is my preference. I like using the Bollinger Bands, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the Bollinger Bands show you, let's zoom out. Okay. The Bollinger Bands show you when a. I should look quite a new pair. Okay, perfect. So the Bollinger Bands show you, okay, again, when a reversal should be happening. So you notice every time the market comes to the edge of the Bollinger Band, it moves the opposite way. Here, okay, so we've got here, 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 okay, here. Every time it comes to the edge, it moves the opposite way. So if your D point is on the edge of a Bollinger Band, look, ladies and gentlemen, it is. It's on the edge of my Bollinger Band. It should be looking to come to the other way or at least to the middle. That's another little, little uh, cheeky one that I use. No, no particular settings for Bollinger Bands. I use the standard. And last but not least, um, Teta's question before I hand over to Chris. If you're using the 15-minute time frame, you are looking for 15-minute candle closures, okay? If you're using the 15-minute trades, you're looking 
for the same candle closures. Once one 15 minute candle closes, you can use that. If it comes to the middle of the Bollinger Band, what happens? Um, it can either go to the other edge or start going back up to the other end. So for instance, here, okay, this is at the edge. Once it gets to the middle, it's either gonna carry on to the opposite side or it could pull back to the edge again. So just be careful when it gets to the middle because it's either gonna carry on in its direction or pull back. Okay, so just to finish off that question, if you're using the 15 minute time frame here, using 15 minute trades, you look for can you can look for candle closure on the 15. That's good because to be honest with you, on the 15, I don't drop down to the one minute or the five just because I truly want to see momentum and I don't feel that you can get a good grasp of momentum on five and one minutes. Other people might teach you that, but I like to trade safe. So I always stick to 15 minutes. So that being said, if you're on the hour, you're on the 30 minutes, you're on the four hour, look for 15 minute candles. So this trade is an hour candle. Once everything, all of my confirmations have married up, my support and resistance zone, my divergence, my stochastic, what I would then do is jump on trading view, watch AUD JPY and wait for the 15 minute candle closures. Once I get that substantial candle closure on the 15 minute, you can safely enter. You can drop down time frames on the higher thing. So you're not sitting there waiting for a full hour for the candle closure. Okay, now that's it from my segment. Um, I'm going to bring a guy on. And the reason why um, I'm going to bring this, this person on, he was one of the first when, when I actually... So I've been, I've been doing harmonics for many years now. This is the first thing I've done when, when Des and I started the academy. Um, but I've been doing many strategies. I can teach many strategies on the harmonic. But it's only during lockdown that I, I decided that I wanted to learn something new. So I decided to master multiplier. Um, and this guy, Chris, was probably was one of the first, one of my first mentees in learning this. And when I, I can humbly say that he has overtook me, like he knows more now. Sorry, my internet cut. He knows more now than I ever do did. OK, so definitely listen. This is the point where if you haven't took notes, you want to because this guy is catching pips on a regular basis. He's absolutely amazing. In fact, he was a bit of a diva. He, he didn't want to do this trading because he hadn't had a haircut, hence the lovely hat that he's got on his head. But don't worry about the haircut. Um, <laughs> he's good, I promise you. It shows his dedication. He's not stuck out to the barbers, got a cheeky haircut. Um, he's just been catching those pips. But guys, all jokes aside, he's absolutely amazing. He's going to go through fibs with you. He's going to re-go over some of the entries with you. And just really, because he really does know his stuff. He's took what I've taught him and he's just blown it up times 10. And for me as a mentor, that's what you can always dream of, is that your people overtake you because now I know that what I was doing was right. But he's took it to a whole new level. And his team, oh my God, they've got so much value in taking these trades. Like I know Mike, him and Mike get up every single morning. They do some trades together. Honestly, guys, this guy is an absolute beast. And the reason why I get him on my calls is because I want to excel him to the top because that's what he deserves. In the short space of under three months, I promise you that this guy is the best. He knows his shizzle. So get your pens and papers out. Get ready to listen to Chris. Chris, let me unmute you. Uh, let me find you. Guys, let's show some love in the chat box. Drop some ones for Chris while I'm unmuting him. He's absolutely amazing. And I promise you, you're going to learn something from him today. In fact, Chris, some, last time you've done a session, somebody asked if you come from a military background because you're very clear and precise. <laughs> so that's a massive compliment. <laughs> right, guys. Uh, I have a... Don't watch his haircut. Don't watch that. Just watch the charts because he's pure. That's Chris, let me stop. Riley, um, wow, thank you a lot for that introduction. Uh, yeah, blew me away a little bit. Thanks for that. Um, wicked, mate, you know that. <laughs> so can I share my screen? Yeah, yeah, I've got, I I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got my... Okay, cool. 
Um, so before before I do that, I just want to say to everyone watching that everything that I'm about to go through with you is on in the videos, so on your training plan modifier. So the stuff I've learned, the stuff Brian has gone through, it is all there in in the videos, and you can watch them time out and time again just until you perfect it. So um, this is an addition to that. This has been really helpful. I've got down a few notes about candles. Brian, cheers for that. Um, you know, you're always a student, but I just keep, keep learning. So let me, let me get into what I want to show you. So, okay, where are we? Okay. So Fib, so Fibonacci, I, I use the Fibonacci tool on absolutely every single day. So, when we're looking at entry confirmations, Brian has done a great job there today explaining, you know, the indicators and the MACD, the autumn, five and nine crossing, Bollinger Bands, all these things that are incredible. And I use FIBS purely because one of the videos Manny um, was explaining FIBS to, to the, well, to us all, um, he said about the 618. And I don't know why, but it's stuck in my head. And it, he said something along the lines of 618 is like, um, it's like when you, when you get to learn it properly, it's when you can fire your boss. And I don't know why, but that just, that was in my head. I am my own boss, I've got my own business, but I do want to fire myself. And so yeah, let me show you what I mean. The, the way you draw fibs, let me start from scratch actually. So you've got your all your tools down the left hand side here and the Fibonacci is in this menu and you're looking for Fib retracement. You click on it. I always look from the, the previous high. So if I go back to where this market started to turn, you simply click and then you drag down to the low. So look, look this couldn't be any better. If I zoom in, can you see that that's literally come down, bounced off this area, retraced to the 618? You already know it's a downtrend because it started um, creating lower lows and lower highs. And it's hit the 618. So bang, that's information that the market sells off. Lovely. And this pair just keeps repeating the same thing. It doesn't always happen, so I've, I've already looked at this one, and I actually entered this trade uh, the other day with, with Mike. So look, it didn't quite reach that retracement, so it's come down, bounced off this line, and doesn't quite reach the 618. You see there, it reaches like a 50% halfway stage. But the reason I entered this trade was due to um, the SRT level, so support and resistance, so look, it creates a, a lovely, lovely, clean, breaks the support line, bounces back up to the area, and boom, sells off. So, okay, that wasn't FIBS, um, but another, another sort of endorsement to Manny's teaching. He's, the, the stuff you'll learn on that is literally, you, can, you can't unlearn it. You can just only get it. So what have we got here? Look, we've got another sells off, it then retraces back to the 618 or to that area. Again, it sells off. So we've got a lovely downtrend, structure, beautiful, 618, enter, in profit. So the market keeps doing this. And if you know um, the rules of engagement, so money is hot on these. So he says every fourth, so you're looking for four touches. So I'll come to this in a moment. Um, so that I, I drew up this pattern. So I'm going to get into patterns in a minute as well. You see here, it's just creating these touch points on the trend line. So I just drew that trend line down. And I did the same here. Connected. Um, Manny calls them uh, data points in his American accent. The data, data, you know, market data. So look, it's literally perfect. Comes into the channel, 618, sells off. Comes into the channel, yeah, sells off. Back into the channel, 618, sells off. 
So that is now, you've got one, one hit, second hit, third hit, fourth hit, you're normally expecting it to break. And then hey-ho, retest, and bang, we got in again, and we bought that up. I closed here because I was happy with my profit for the day. Um, and this, this is even, this is amazing. I love Fib, so I get really excited when I see the 618. I don't know, but the, right, what is that area where it starts to reverse? It is the 618. So 618's amazing. If, I, if I'm looking at the scanner, so I'll look at the scanner exactly like Brian was explaining, that cherry pick trade, I set it up exactly how Brian explained. I then come to trading view, because it's easier for me with Fibs. Uh, if it's on the 618, this is another confirmation that you know, this is going to be a valid trade. Um, the other good areas are the 38.2, which you can see here, that's the inverted 618. And then when you're looking at third best confirmation, draw these back. I'll try and explain this. So you've got the top of the move. to the bottom of the move. And this is how you draw your target areas. But you would look for the 1618. So if it ever came down to the 1618, it's pretty much out of steam, but like I can't really go much further. If you get to that sort of level, then that's another um, real good indication that the price is about to reverse and jump up, which is, again, another confirmation that we're looking for. Um, before I move on to patterns, uh, I haven't looked at the chat box. Is there any questions about food? Uh, there is. Um, okay, so what is the FIB used for? So, um, Fibonacci levels, he, he, again, Manny explains it in his video, but what we use it for is for um, entry confirmations. So, it, it shows. Um, it's the golden phi ratio. I don't really know really what that means, but um, it's something about the evolution of price and how it um, can only do certain things at certain times. So the 618 is like a, a level where things normally tend to bounce off. Um, he does a whole FIB masterclass. So if you want to be like a FIB expert, um, look at his FIB video. But I think one of my team have done. Um, but for me, I use it as an entry confirmation. Okay, so from what base point are you uh, to draw your FIB? Okay, let me explain that with um, this live one. So when you're looking at FIB, you first click. If it was a downtrend, you're looking at the top of the move, you drag it down. Um, if you're looking at an uptrend, you're looking at the bottom of the move, like the swing points in the market. So you pick at the bottom, see where the wick um, reaches the lowest point up to the highest point of the move. So that wick, that red wick, and you can just drag it across. So if we were looking to they'll sell this off, this will give us our target areas. So 38.2 is target one, 618 target two, um, one is target three, 127 target four, 1618 target four. So TP1, two, three, four. Um, I hope that answers the question. Okay, a uh, good question. Sure. So the fibs are on the. I get rid of that. Uh, fibs are on the scanner. If I can find it. If I load up my scanner. Yeah, Dom. That. Yeah, I've I've used fibs on the scanner and. Nine times out of ten, the TP level is all based on fibs. Um, so it's how many taught me to look at targets and stop loss um, because it's like in a ratio of the market. Um, Shola, you can get fibs here. So you've got the same menu bar down the left, and then you get your fibs. And you can use the fibs on the market. For me, it's personal preference. Like I like the way it looks on my trading view, but you can use it on um, on the. 
Are there any more questions before I move on to patterns? Okay, I'll move on. If they come up, I'll, I'll come back to it. So, um, again, this is in Manny's videos. He talks about um, cheat sheet and market patterns. Again, it's one of his entry confirmations is looking at <clears throat> we've got a continuation pattern and a reversal pattern. So again, I just save these to my favourites, so I've got them all the time. Um, you know, easy access. But look, it shows you that if the market's pulled up into this um, zone and you're maybe at point three in the market, you can, you can you know, look draw these patterns. You, you can then sense if that price is looking to go bullish or bearish. You know, if it's an uptrend or downtrend. You, you, it's just a clue. It's, it's not 100%, but it's very, um, it's another confirmation. So, you know, if you've got um, engulfing candle, five and nine have crossed, signals come out of the MACD, AOs in the direction you're looking at, um, stock is crossed into the into momentum, you've got patterns, you've got fibs. You know, you could have six or seven confirmations, which just means that your trade is more likely to go in the direction of um, your trade. So if you've got a sale and you've got seven confirmations for a sale, you know, it's highly probable it's going to go down. One, isn't it? So um, I look at patterns. So again, going back to GBP NZD, so this isn't a traditional flag pattern, to be honest, um, but it's close, but it's definitely a channel. You see that it was, if I go to the four hour, So that's been downtrending a long time. So, you know, when, when I'm looking at setting up sales on this um, pair, I'm fairly confident that it's been downtrending a long time over the four hour chart. And on the hour, it's creating this lovely pattern. So it, for me, it was more the fact that fibs, the structure, then this sort of channel was happening. I sort of drew it out. It just came to me to draw it up, and that's just practice. Um, and then rules of engagement breaks, comes back to this sort of high area, and then goes off. There is potential that this could be a change in trend. So, you know, this could be bullish. These are all my target areas, but like I said, I, I came when I was happy. The chat. Oh, show sure, that's a great question. Right, so I got sucked into the trap of signing up for Pro, so I, I did a free trial, which I cancelled. You don't need a Pro Trading View. This is just a basic, the free one for you know you to sign up for any um, Pro or, or cost or weekly cost trading view. It's all in the basics. Um, yeah. Um, patterns wise, it, it took me, to be honest, I, I started on the 1st of April learning the strategy. Brian mentioned earlier that we um, had a bit of a joke about how many times we both watched the videos. So I think that's, an, that's one great thing about the Academy is that the, the videos are recorded so you can re-watch them, watch them as many times as you like, they're always going to be there. And there's a lot of information on the videos, especially when you get into like the boot camp. And the multiplier video, you need to go over it a few times because you likely have missed a few things. So I, I watch them quite often and just to refresh myself. Um, but the harmonic scanner is where I always start, like Brian said about setting up the trade. I then come onto my trading view to look at fib levels and see if there's any patterns I just find it easier to see. Um, but on my trading view, I've got all my indicators set up, like um, the harmonic. So I just use the harmonic scanner really to validate the trade and then I move everything over to the to trading view and from there I, I look for momentum. So um, yeah, I hope that helps. Are there any other questions on fibs, patterns, anything else you want to ask? Okay, I think that's... Uh, 
all the, all the questions are. So thanks for asking the questions as you go through. Um, Brian, it was a bit of a whistle stop tour. Hopefully that sort of landed. Um, but all I would say is practice, practice, practice fibs. You know, keep keep practicing with fibs. Um, you know, draw them upside down to get your stop loss. It's everything that Manny goes through. So I just made loads of notes. Practice loads. Um, you know, one thing I was doing before I went live was I was replaying the market. So going back to like January. So I, and I'll you know try not to look at what happened next, and I'll try and then mark it up to see if I could um, predict what was going on next. Um, um, to be honest, you can just use the scanner. So again, it's another, it's, it's unique to us at IM. Um, you know, the scanner is a tool that does all the hard work for you. So I, I use it purely to cherry pick a trade. So the, the, um, and then I do what Brian shows you, so spot support resistance. And uh, look at all the confirmations, and then for me, I just prefer to go over the trading view. You don't have to. Um, that's just the way I, I do it. You know, you'll find your own way with that. But yeah. oh, big shout out to my mum. My mum's on this call. She's just said thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you should be watching the videos as well, mum. No, I'm joking. She's doing well. Um, Sorry, Chris, may have missed this. Um, on, how do you see the TPNSL? Okay, so Jamie, that, that is all covered on the um, on Manny's videos, but I'll just I'll just quickly rip through that again. When you've got your fibs. Okay, so if I, I use this high to this low, say we were Oh, that's probably a bad example. So if we're looking to sell the market, yeah. So you when you're looking at target areas, you go backwards. So I've drawn it from the low here up to the high. And say we were entering here. No, I've done that. Say so you're entering here. Your first target area is the 38.2 it from the low, sorry, to like where you're looking to enter. 38 twos target one, six one eights target two, one or which is a hundred percent of the move is target three. So that's in line with the low over here. Then if it's continuing the downtrend, I'm going to break that low, which is what downtrends do. You seven, and then the one six one eight is your last target. So if it carries on going through there, it's not going to be long until it turns back. So that's how I do targets, and then stop loss. The exact reverse. So settings style. What have I done? Uh, reverse. Okay, then I'll I'll put my stop loss in around. The 113127. So I'll mark up that area as like a as a rectangle. And I'll be looking for previous highs within this area. And then I'll make sure that my stop loss is away from those highs. Um, the markets like to trade into, into swing highs. So I just I just make sure it's clear of any highs. But the 113 is like a short stop loss, 127, a big stop loss. If you do the multiplier accurately, relevant because you should go straight into profit. It. Twenty pips up, move your stop to entry, let it ride. So, you know, it's more about looking at targets and entry confirmation. Any more questions, guys? So there's one there from Grace. So if you're looking at buying, so. You mean are you looking for targets or are you looking for entry confirmation, Grace? Grace. 
Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I think she just means in general, how does she draw the fib if she's looking for a buy? So, well, I've got that reverse now. Okay, so if you're if, obviously if you're looking for a buy, if, if you're looking for targets for a buy, so you're looking at where the market's going to retrace to. So I would take. Well, let me start again. Right, so click the fib. First click is at the bottom of the move. Previous high. Okay, I've deleted my fibs. I, I, <laughs> I have to put the 100 back in. Okay. Um, so you're going from low to high if you're looking to buy because the market's going to retrace up. So you're looking at the 382618. Um, I hope that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, someone asked what type of trader I am. Um, I'm still actually trying to figure that out. I want to be a scalper, which is um, you know, in and out fairly quickly. Um, but sometimes my, my trades will last for a few hours. Um, they're normally within the same day, so. Yeah, I'd say inch a day. Yeah, inch a day. I think that's it. I think I've answered all your questions. Amazing. Um, just practice, 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 practice. Yeah, that's it guys, practice really does make perfect. And like Chris said, we've actually watched a video, like probably the, the recordings, everything probably like four, four or five times. So I strongly recommend that you guys do the same. Um, honestly, yeah. the value in it. I, do, I will be honest, I prefer watching the multiplier recorded than these actual live sessions. It's a bit quick. Um, his live session so if you do go on his live sessions and you feel a bit kind of overwhelmed that's that's natural don't worry about that with me and Chris literally just re-watch the multi recording so that will help you more value than it will kind of watching him live all of our previous recorded sessions are on my YouTube um, so I will upload this tonight there's two other YouTube videos that go through the full thing of divergence support and resistance and entry this one will be labelled up as entry. So you, there's free, there'll be by tonight free videos of um, Multifire. And I've got the seven minute setup video. Um, I'm going to send it in the leadership group. So all leaders that are on this call, please dispense across your groups um, and you can then receive it that way. If you still don't receive it, um, please just private message me on, in, not on Instagram, on WhatsApp or something and I'll get that across to you. Guys, let's show some love in the chat box for Chris. He didn't have to come on and do this teaching today. So can we drop some one just to show our thank you to Chris for coming on board and, and featuring. Chris, sincerely thank you. I love having you um, co-pilot in with me. So that's amazing. You were going to become... No, I loved it. You're going to become uh, permanent fiction now, whether you've got a haircut or not. You're definitely on oh, it. Two, I'm two weeks away from a haircut. I put my appointment today. So we're, you know, we're nearly there. And guys, let's drop some twos in the chat box for Chris's mum. <laughs> guys, Chris's mum's on. Oh. Let's drop some twos for Chris's mum. Chris's mum, I don't know why I said that in third person, but she, she's <laughs> learning as well. So, she, you know. Yeah. We, we've convinced mum to jump on board. Yeah, mum even said she'll cut your hair for you. Mum, I've got to No, you're right. No, you're right. Do that. Guys, we are a family business. <laughs> <laughs> guys. We're going to love you and leave you off. Thank you for you for jumping on board. If you need any of the recordings, let me know. Because you've dropped so many ones in the chat box, Chris will be a permanent feature on my recordings because you wow. love it so much. So it's an honour, guys, to share this with you. Take care. Good night. Thank you. Here, everyone.